Hello everyone, I'm Scott with Web Hosting Hub, and I'll be walking you through today on your first blog today. It's a fairly straightforward process, and it doesn't take much longer, maybe five or ten minutes or so, even for your first time. And we're going to do this through the control panel, but to get to that, we need to go through the account manager panel. So I'm already logged in here in the account manager panel, and to get to the control panel, or C panel, I'm going to scroll down a little bit, so you see this control panel area here, and click on the working control panel link. All right, and this brings you up to your control panel, and this is the main page here. So we're going to look for the software services category down here, and then this little icon here called Softaculous. Softaculous is a program that installs other programs much faster than by doing a manual process. So we're going to use this today to install our blog. Now we're here on the main page, and you can see there's several big icons. These are all the most commonly used programs or commonly installed programs with Softaculous. And we're going to use WordPress because it's the most popular blog platform right now. Uh, very good one. So we're going to click on install. This brings us to our WordPress install page. And there's several fields you have to enter here to uh, set this up. First is choose protocol. Now when you first click on it, there's four options. And it looks a little scary at first, but we're going to use HTTP option. Okay, and you pretty much want to go with that unless you specifically have purchased and installed a security certificate for your site. If you have, you can always use the HTTPS option if you like. But in our case, we haven't, so we're going to stick with the HTTP. Now you have a choice here of using www or non www. It's a personal preference; it doesn't really matter. Um, it just controls how it's going to display in the web browser. Uh, personally, I go with the non www. All right. And next, we're going to choose the domain name we're going to install the WordPress on. If you have more than one domain name, they'll all be listed here. CustomerCommunityHub.com is not the domain name I want to use. So I'm going to click here and select HubTest.com, which is the one here I want to use. There's a couple other oddball ones. You'll probably see a few of these you know, in the list if you have more than one domain name where you have you know, a subdomain. It kind of looks like two of them together, you might have this IP address thing. Just ignore those, they're not useful here. And we're going to click hubtest.com. Now if I want to just have hubtest.com as my WordPress site, I would just leave this in directory field blank. But, for instance, if I have kind of a mixed site where I have several pages up top at hubtest.com, and I want to put my WordPress area at hubtest.com slash blog, I would simply type in the word blog here. I don't want to do that today, so I'm going to go and wipe that back out. All right. Now, database name. This is randomly generated. Uh, you can change it if you like, if you have something specific you want to use. But generally, I just leave that blank, or as it is. And then we have the database table prefix. Again, I use this as it is by default. Next, we have site settings. We have the site name, which is like the site title. It's going to be the large letters at the top of the page for the most part. And then we have the site description, which is usually the tagline or subtitle that's got a lower um, size font, usually right around, right to the side of the title there. All right. Now, you can change this to be anything you want. And you can change it later on if you don't like it or you change it around a little bit. So you're not stuck with whatever you put here. If you're not sure, just go ahead and leave that as it is. And next we have this section here, this checkbox for enable multi-site. If you want to run multiple WordPress blogs from the same admin, you can click that here. It is a little more complicated, and unless you're familiar with doing it, I would just leave it just like it is. Uh, for the most part, we're going to look with, work with one single blog, so we're going to leave that unchecked. All right, now we're down to the admin area. We're going to enter our admin information, the username we want to use, the password, and the admin email address. Now, the username can be anything you like. Uh, I would suggest staying away from anything obvious like admin or administrator just for security purposes. Right, you can mix it up a little bit. We're going to make this one hub admin. All right, if that works. And then we have the password. Again, stay away from simple passwords, simple one word passwords, dictionary words. It is pretty secure to use a phrase, a uh, sentence, something like that. Or if you want to go completely random, click on this icon over here, and it's going to generate just a very hard, difficult password to use. All right. Next, we have the admin email. 
Again, you can change this later on. So uh, if you change emails or you decide to let somebody else do it, uh, it's not hard to change out. But you want to have a valid email address. This is because a lot of things are sent to this email address, notifications, update notifications. Um, if you forget your password, you're going to need to be able to recover that. And this is what this is used for. So as long as it's valid and you're happy with it right now, just leave that there. All right. Now, most of us are going to use the English language here. The vast majority of websites out there are English. But if you have another specific language you want to use, there's a great big list here that WordPress does support. We're going to use the English for us. All right. Now, this is new to the install form. This is the Limit Login Attempts plugin option. WordPress uh, allows an unlimited amount of login attempts by default. So someone can sit there with a brute force attack uh, where they can sit there by themselves and try over and over and over and try to get your password. By clicking this button here, it installs a plugin that limits the number of attempts that someone can do in a specific amount of time. After they hit that number, if they haven't logged in yet, it locks them out. Okay, and that time can get longer and longer. You're able to adjust all this later on once you get in. I suggest using this for security purposes. And next we have the advanced options. We're going to skip that. We're just going to click the install button here and let it do its thing. Now you have the progress bar here. This can take anywhere from a few seconds to about a minute. Uh, it usually doesn't take very long. And it didn't. Right here we're done. So it says congratulations. The software was installed successfully. And it gives us a link here. WordPress has been successfully installed at hubtest.com, which is the domain name we chose. And then administrative URL is hubtest.com slash WP admin. Gonna go ahead and open those up in new windows here, new tabs. Alright, so if we go visit the site itself, we'll see the default theme here. This is the 2014 theme. Uh, it doesn't look like a lot, but actually it's pretty nice because it's it's responsive, which works better for you know phones and tablets and stuff like that. And now we'll click on the login tab so you can see what the admin login area looks like. This has been how to install a blog. I'm Scott with Web Hosting Hub and thanks for watching.